Hi everybody and welcome to today's video from Nick Taylor Plumbing Limited. Today we're going to show you how to put these little beauties inside this tap. Ooh. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure we have the right tap cartridges. The reason being is there's so many different makes and models of these little beauties for every single individual tap out there, which is a right headache. But I'm here to save the day because on your kitchen tap, normally either at the front, and if it's not at the front, it'll be on the back of the tap. It says the make, the name, and even better, the serial number or the model number of the tap. So you put that into the internet and you should be able to find it. If not, send us an email with some pictures and we'll do it for you. Now we need to talk about what tools do we need to do this job. This is a simple job, easy job, with very basic tools, so most people will be able to do this with relative ease. So all we're going to need is a spanner, two screwdrivers, a flathead, and also a Phillips or crosshead or whichever you prefer to call it. And that's it. Before we start this, we need to talk about what problems can occur and how we solve them. But for the simplicity of this video, I'm going to discuss that at the end and we're going to focus on changing these tap cartridges. Yeah! We need to turn the water off. There's a couple of ways to do this. The simplest way is you need to look under the sink down here, hello, and find and locate what they call an isolation valve. If you don't know what an isolation valve is, this is it here. You simply get your screwdriver, put it into the flat bit, and turn it 90 degrees. That is off. And if you turn it the other way, diddly do, that is on. So if that line where you put this screwdriver in is in line with the valve, that means it's on. If it's the opposite way, like that, it means it's off. So no matter what orientation that is on the pipe work, as long as it's the opposite way to the valve, it means it's off. If you don't have one of these, you'll more than likely have one of these. However, these are quite expensive, so it's unlikely that the plumber would have fit them in the first place, unless you're from Nick Taylor Plumbing, of course. And then you just, these simply go 90 degrees like that. That's off, and it even tells you what's on and off. And if all else fails, and you haven't got either of those two, two valves, you then need to look for the stop tap, the legendary stop tap, which is normally under your kitchen sink or in a utility room or something like that. If you haven't got one of those, you'll have to turn the water off in the road under the man cover. Uh, but this is dead simple. Just simply turn it off like that, all the way so it's nicely tight. And then when you turn it back on, you just open it up. Ta-da! Fortunately for me, I had these isolation valves, which are little beauties. So I've turned those off and I've opened the tap and any pressure has now been released and, all the, and there's no more water running out. If you don't have one of these down there, then you need to find your stop tap. You turn that off. But that then means the, ha the water is off to your whole house. So you then need to open your kitchen tap and open every other tap around the house. So any downstairs toilets you have, open the taps in there. Uh, your bathrooms upstairs, just open them hot and cold. Let them run out until it eventually dribbles to a stop. Normally that can take between two to five minutes depending on how big your house is. But you must make sure the water is off. Top tip for this. Get the plug, the sink plug, and simply push it down and in. So any little fiddly bits of screws or anything that you drop doesn't end up down the drain and you're having to take, unplug the, the whole waste system to find it. Now I'll put you in a little bit closer. This particular tap has the covers on here. And then you literally just get your screwdriver, pop that off, just like that. This is why we put our plug down in there. So if any of these drop down into the sink, into the waste, you don't want to be fishing them out. So you take that off, both hot and cold. So inside there, which I'll bring you a little bit closer, there's a screw head, which is the Phillips. You just, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. so you take that out, keep it safe. And this is the best bit, it just comes, whoa, baby. Do that to the other side as well. And this is what you're left with. And you get your spanner, put him on, like so. And you quite literally make it tight. Hold the base, you wanna hold that nice and secure, and then just prise it, wiggle it back and forward. It can be quite stiff, 
and just undo it like so. This point you're going to notice a bit of water starts dribbling out. It's just the water which is in the spout up here and it'll come out. If you take it out too quick, this is what's going to happen. Ah! You'll notice the old hot cartridge is red. The new one is obviously red and the other new one is blue. So that helps identify what's what. So before we go any further, I just want to show you Inside the tap here, which I'll do a close up in a sec, we need to make sure that the rubber bit here, which sits against in that tap, which turns the water off, we need to make sure there's no build up of lime scale in there. Because if there is, the lime scale, as it grows, will put pressure on our rubber washer, which means water will slowly seep past, and it may have been the cause of the drip. And what we call that is tap reseating. Um, most people who are watching this video, unless you're a tradesman, won't have a tap reseating tool. Hence why I'm going to use a screwdriver. It's as simple as this. And you literally, a flat blade will do it. You actually put it in, and the idea is you rub the flat bit of metal in there to get any lime scale off. Now, this one uh, is clean, great. Um, and yours will probably be too. But it's certainly worth just looking at. Uh, it's something which people can overlook, but it's quite an important tip. So I'll just bring you in so you can have a look. So that's what I'm referring to, just in there, that the base of that, where the cartridge is gonna sit, sit against. If that's covered in lime scale, that's what's gonna cause your leak. Now we've gone through that, we're gonna get our new cartridge and just screw it in. It is simple as that. So you just screw them in. Wanna make sure the rubber washer on the perimeter is nice and tight. And what I mean by the rubber washer is that black rubber wash around there. You'll see it pinch in, get your screwdriver, a spanner, and just tighten it up. And then when you get to the point where you give it that final sort of nip up so it's nice and firm, hold the base of the tap and just see it's about there. Um, you'll gauge it and you just give it that final turn. In all fairness, it won't go any further anyway, so you can't really over tighten it. And that is your hot cartridge in place, just like that. Now it's exactly the same process for the cold side. You put your spanner on there, like so, and you hold the base here, and you just turn it. God, it's tight. Give it a wiggle back and forth until he eventually loosens up. This one was quite stiff, so I would suspect this is the one that was dripping, or causing the drip. You might have a little bit of water in here again, but nothing to worry about too much. And there you go, and I would suggest that that, where it's deformed here, that is where our leak was. That's the new one, that's the old one. That's worn so thin, if you look at the difference, which you can tell that, that's what's caused the leak. Again, I'll get my tap me seat and tool on my screwdriver and just make sure the inside of that's nice and clean. And you just give it a good going over until it's all the lime scales out. You get your new cartridge, you put it in, and you just screw it in hand tight. And you get your spanners, or spanner, I should say. Tighten them up. So you nipped him up good. What you might find is that the old screw is a slightly different diameter to the new screw, which in this case it is, you probably can't see that too well. Um, so just take the old one out and put the new one in, simple as that. So now we need to just align the tap head onto the top here. So um, if I put it lined up like that, that's all, it won't go any further down. And I can see that that's obviously not quite right. That's, uh, that is like in the off position and then that will be in the on position or vice versa. So I push that as far back as it will go, take it off and just put it back on. So that's, it won't go any further back now, it's vertical. So I know that that is in the off position. Now that is all the way down, that is an on position and it's perfectly straight, horizontal, level, whichever. So I know that that's on. And then I'll get my screw, yeah, and just screw them in. Put 
put our little head back on. Voila! We do exactly the same this side, so we unscrew that. And our new one. Put our head on. No, that's not quite right. Won't go any further back. That's all the way down, looks great. Pushing back up. Get our screw. Put it in. Unfortunately, the head, the plastic bit there, has just broke off. So I might have to just put a bit of glue or I can go online and get the replacement part for that. Should stay in. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put a bit of glue on that, unfortunately, but that's no, no problem. So now we've done that, we put the cartridges in, we put, we've put put the heads of the tap back on, we put it all back together. Before we turn the water back on, we need to go around the house turning all taps off, if we turn it off on the stop tap, or if it, we use the isolation valves, um, we can then just turn the water back on. So turn the taps off if you've turned them on, and then uh, once you've done that, you can turn the tap on, you've, everything's pressurized. You turn the tap on, just like that. Now let's talk about problems and how we get out of a pickle by solving these problems. So what can go wrong in this, um, this job? Uh, fortunately, it's a very simple, straightforward job and the chances of anything going uh, pear-shaped are very slim. Uh, however, it's always good to know and be prepared what can, uh, for the problem which can occur. The first thing is you order the wrong tap cartridges. It's the most frustrating thing in the world, but there are so many out there, like I said earlier. So if you do order the wrong ones and they don't fit, keep your old ones and you can put them back in uh, until the new ones arrive and uh, happy days. The next thing which can go wrong, and there's a slightly higher probability of this, is your isolation valve. So if it's really old, what happens when you turn, oh, I've got the wrong screwdriver. What happens when you turn the, turn that on and off, the lime scale gets at it. And there's a little rubber washer which goes around there, and that rubber washer will, uh, becomes, um, it, like the lime scale grips to the rubber and the metal, and when you turn it, it just pulls it and it just rips that rubber washer a little bit. And if that happens, you'll have a little stream of water trickle out. Not great, and I'm probably not filling you with confidence with this, but all you gotta do is basically push it in. Push that in a little bit, bit of pressure. Not, you don't wanna break the pipe work and go through your next door neighbor's house, but you just gotta push it in a little bit and wiggle it. And you'll find that that stream just turns into a little drip or may even stop. If that does happen, or if you really are having a problem, find your stop tap and turn it off. Done. The next problem which can occur is your stop, stop tap might, again, down to lime scale, start dripping from here. And fortunately, it's a dead simple fix. And I've got a YouTube video on how to fix that, which I'll put in the comment section down below. And that's it. Thanks for watching this short video and don't forget to like and subscribe.